In this video, I'll introduce the basics of co-reference resolution. I'll provide relevant background information and then cover some key terminology you'll encounter. Words and text or speech are said to co-refer when they reference the same entity. For example, we could refer to UIC as UIC, as the University of Illinois at Chicago, as just the university, or in some cases just using the pronoun it. Co-reference resolution is then the process of automatically identifying which expressions refer to the same entity and grouping them together to facilitate natural language understanding. High-performing co-reference resolution is crucial to developing high-quality NLP systems. Without effective co-reference resolution, a system can only determine that a previously introduced topic or entity is being discussed if it is referenced using exactly the same terms. As we know from just regular human experience, this is uncommon in normal conversation. If I tell you something like, I'm teaching CS421, Natural Language Processing, this semester, it would be a little bit unusual for you to respond with, oh, do you cover co-reference resolution in CS421, Natural Language Processing? What humans instead typically do to save time and reduce redundancy is refer to previously introduced entities using shorter referring expressions in the remainder of the discussion. For example, a news article might introduce someone first by their full name and then refer to that person using just their last name or their pronouns going forward. Or in the example dialogue you see on this slide, one person might list the full official name of a CS course and the next person might respond using an abbreviated form of that name. In cases like the example, it then becomes the system's job to figure out that the two different referring expressions shown in bold here are in fact referring to the same thing. This brings us to some key terminology that you'll hear when discussing co-reference resolution. In general, co-reference resolution assumes that language is interpreted with respect to a discourse model containing representations of different entities, properties of those entities, and the relations between them. A referent is a discourse entity itself, or in other words, it's the symbol within that discourse model to which individual referring expressions are mapped. Referring expressions are the actual linguistic realizations that correspond to a given referent. So if we're considering a discourse entity representing CS521, which is the graduate level continuation of this course, we could use referring expressions like CS521, CS521 natural language processing, and so forth. In each of those cases, we'd be referring to the same referent. When two or more referring expressions refer to the same referent, the referring expressions are said to co-refer. Co-reference resolution is also often referred to, no pun intended, as anaphora resolution. An anaphora is a referring expression that refers to a referent that has already been introduced in the discourse. So assuming you have multiple referring expressions in a discourse that all refer to the same referent. The first of those referring expressions that occurs is the antecedent, and all the remainder of those referring expressions are anaphores. When there are entities that are only mentioned once in a discourse, they're sometimes referred to as singletons. So in the example text here, the introductory University of Illinois at Chicago would be an antecedent, since the referent to which it refers is mentioned numerous times in the text, and this is the first mention. These other circled referring expressions would be anaphores, since they refer to the same referent, but are not the first mention of that referent. The name circled here would be a singleton, because it's just mentioned once in the text passage. There is nothing else referring to this referent. So then finally, a set of co-referring expressions is often known as a co-reference chain. There are technically two co-reference chains from the examples that were just mentioned. The first co-reference chain would correspond to the UIC entity, where we have four different referring expressions all referring to that entity. 
The second co-reference chain would correspond to the Natalie Party entity, where there is just a single referring expression that refers to that entity. If we further analyzed this sample text, we could also build some additional co-reference chains for things like Chicago or CS building. At its core then, co-reference resolution comprises two main tasks. First, you need to identify all the different entity mentions or referring expressions in the text. Then you need to cluster those referring expressions into co-reference chains that all refer to the same entity. Some systems will then take things even a step further and perform entity linking, which maps co-reference chains to real-world entities, for example, using external knowledge sources like Wikipedia.